Welcome back to the shop, my friends. Steve here at SKS Props, and in today's build video, I have a project that I think could be pretty beneficial to the cosplay community, and that's making some basic shin and knee armor. Now, these are specifically for my Colonial Marine armor set, but the templates are generic enough that I think you could modify them and utilize them for a bunch of different superheroes, villains, and other types of characters. And if you would like to do that, of course, the PDF templates for these are absolutely free, available over on my website. You can download those and build right along with the video. The Shin Armor is, of course, also made completely out of my HD foam, which you can find over at Blick Art Materials. And if you like these videos, you like the free templates, by all means, pick up some HD foam, support me and the channel by going through the links that are in the description section and those that are on the website. So I wanna show you what it takes to put this armor together. Let's go ahead and get started. Here's a shot of the prototype I made to create the final templates. We're gonna start by taking part A. This is gonna be traced and cut out of some 10 millimeter foam two times. When starting a project, always make sure to have a well sharpened blade. Part B is gonna make up the side of the shin, and the thing to note is that the interior cut will be at a 30 degree angle. I also mark cut lines for where the parachute clips are gonna go. Having the foam cut at an angle like this will allow it to wrap around the shin and have a more natural look. Weldwood contact cement is gonna be used to join all these pieces together, and I make sure to wear my respirator. After the contact cement had dried, a little bit of super glue was added. Because of the heavy strain on the seam, this double adhesive method will make sure that the foam sticks together. I start at the bottom of the shin and I slowly work my way up. This process could then be repeated for the opposite side. Now if your seams aren't perfect, don't worry about it because I'm gonna knock it down with a rotary tool later on. But with all these sections assembled, it gives a nice form to the front of the armor. Before gluing these cuts together, I go ahead and sand the edges as well as the seams with a rotary tool and a sanding sponge. I can then lightly heat seal the sanded areas and start to manipulate the shape of the foam. Using some Bob Smith super glue on the cuts, I adhere the foam together. On one side of the shin, the sections are raised, on the other side, they're lowered. This will give a depression for the side with the parachute clips, but a raised area for the nylon underneath on the opposite side. Now these are not a necessity if you didn't want to add these details to your armor. Using a rotary tool, I round over the lower edge of the shins as well as the sides. A little bit more heat could be added to the foam at this time to help get the shape that I want. And remember when heating foam, you always want to wear your respirator and work in a well-ventilated area. The lower recessed section is gonna be made up of parts C and D. These are all gonna be traced and cut out of some six millimeter foam. Part C is gonna be glued into place using some super glue, lining it up with the back side of part A. Just like part B, the interior cuts of part D need to have a 30 degree angle. This is gonna match the cuts from up above and help contour to the shape. This process is then repeated for the part D on the opposite side. Now just like the cuts on the sides, if you didn't want to add the lower detail sections to this armor, you don't have to. Again, the reason I'm doing this is to match the Colonial Marines armor set. Using a rotary tool and a sanding sponge, I can now sand down the seams and heat seal the surface. The kneecap needs to have a compound curve to it, so to achieve this, we're gonna use parts E and F. These are gonna be traced and cut out of some 10 millimeter foam. Marking a small section in the middle that's going to be removed. When you're removing this, the cut on the bottom will be at a 90 degree, but the cut on the top will be at a 30 degree. A small strip of six millimeter foam is gonna be sandwiched in between these two pieces. 
Super glue is going to be used and this small 6mm strip can be glued in between the two part E pieces. And this will give me a uniform depression for this detail. And once the strip is glued into place, the additional foam on the sides can be trimmed away. I also take this time to round over the visible cuts on the front. Now I can work on the sides of the kneecap which are going to be made up of part F. Just like parts B and D, the interior cut of part F is going to be cut at a 30 degree angle. After applying some contact cement and super glue to the edges, these pieces can then be assembled. And here you can see how having that angled cut on part F helps the kneecap curve to the back. Now if you didn't want to have this depression detail on the front of your kneecap, you would need to remove a V of foam on the back side of part E. That would allow the foam to still curve back at the angle that you need. A rotary tool can now be used to round over all the edges. And just like I had done on the alien's chest armor, I remove more foam along the edge on the back side. This is going to help these 10mm pieces appear thinner. After a light heat treat, I can then manipulate the foam to get the curve that I want. The kneecap for my shin armor is marked about an inch from the top. Now you can of course adjust this so that the shin armor fits you properly. Super glue is used to adhere this into place and notice that I'm only gluing it in the middle. I want the sides to be able to flex so it can wrap around my leg properly. For the back of the shin armor, we're going to use part G and this is going to be traced and cut out of some 10mm foam. The cuts on the sides are also marked on this piece. Like the front, the foam is glued so that it depresses on one side and pops out on the other. I want to go ahead and shape the armor now before putting it all together, so I'm cutting strips of 2mm foam. While the foam is curved, these strips are going to be glued and pressed into place. This is going to help the foam retain this shape. Notice for the placement of these strips, I'm avoiding those spots that have the cuts. The top of the shin does have a curve to it, but the bottom near the ankle is much more dramatic. This is going to help it have a really nice contoured shape. This same process of curving the foam while adding these 2mm strips is applied to the back of the armor as well. Again with a more dramatic curve in the middle than at the top, conforming to my calf muscle. All the edges of the back of the leg armor can now be rounded over with a rotary tool before being lightly heat sealed. Just like the front, there's going to be a recessed area on the back. This is going to be made using part H, which is going to be traced and cut out of some 6mm foam. This piece is going to be super glued into place, lining up the back of part H with the back of part G. Any additional foam left on the sides can be easily trimmed away to make it flush. Just like parts C and D though, if you did not want to add this piece to the back of your armor, you don't have to. I'm going to use parachute clips and 1 inch nylon to attach the two halves together. The foam is first going to be cut on the sides, making a small slit that the nylon is going to be inserted into. Then I can cut several pieces of nylon for the front and back of each parachute clip. The nylon webbing is going to be glued together at the front of the parachute clip and then inserted into the shin armor. On the inside, more hot glue and super glue are added to keep this piece in place. And here you can see how the side of the parachute clips line up with the armor. This process can then be repeated for the back side of the leg armor as well, making sure to leave enough material so that it weaves through the parachute clip and fits your leg properly. And you may need to increase or decrease the width of part G and H so that it fits you. After I'm satisfied with how the clips look, I can then undo them so I can add more nylon straps on the inside. Here you can see I'm lining up the depressions on the inside, and then adhering small strips of nylon to connect them together. And to make sure that none of this nylon ever pulls away from the foam, I'm also super gluing some 2mm strips on top. And this is great because structurally it's really durable. But because it's foam, it's a lot lighter and more comfortable, especially when compared to a 3D print. 
Now, just like most armor sections, again, everybody's body is gonna be different. My recommendation would be not to really change the sizes of parts A or B. If you need to adjust it to make the fit larger or smaller, I'd recommend to take that away or add to parts G and H. That way, because it's on the back of the lake, it's not gonna be near as noticeable. And if you wanted to, you could always add some upholstery foam on the inside of the armor. That way, once it's clamshell closed, it would give a really snug fit. The parachute clips on the Colonial Marine Armor were riveted to the sides. And to simulate that, I'm gonna cut out some clamps using part I. These are gonna be traced and cut out of some two millimeter foam. The foam is thin enough to slide right down in between the clip and the nylon, giving it the impression that that's what's holding it into place. But really it's the nylon strip underneath being glued to the inside of the foam. This is one of those cosplay hacks where functionally it looks one way on the outside of the piece and a different way on the inside. To continue this riveted look, I'm gonna use a leather hole punch on some two millimeter foam. This is gonna give me a whole bunch of perfect circles that I can glue down and then press into place. The faux rivets are also placed on the opposite side of the shin where the nylon is underneath. At this time, I'm not actually gonna paint them because I have more armor I still need to make for the Marines. And I'd like to paint and distress them all at the same time to get a consistent look. So you all can see what it takes to put together some basic shin and knee armor. And again, this set is specifically for the Colonial Marines, but that doesn't mean that you have to use them exclusively for that. I hope you modify the templates. I hope you utilize these to make a bunch of different characters. And if you are building any of my builds or utilizing HD foam, be sure to tag me at SKS Props on Twitter and Instagram because I love seeing your creations. I started doing Maker Mondays once again, and I just might feature your work. So until next time, Build your best with the best. HD Foam.